it is a pleasure also for me to connect with you and with all of those who are going to enjoy this interview. Uh, for me, it's, it's a great way, you know, to share with everyone, you know, what I enjoy, how I love dance and, and how important is this for me too. Well, you know, I always um, try to, you know, to enjoy every single moment of my life. So when I dance, it's part of what it is. So I always try to find music that really inspire me and keep me connect with, you know, with my vision as an artist. Mm -hmm. So that way, then when I perform, I can really share something truly sure. that I enjoy. Well, um, of course, you know, when all of this started, everything was canceled. So I couldn't, I was not able to teach or to perform. But then we have this opportunity to teach online. And then I decide to take the, you know, the benefit that we were having. And, and I start teaching right away online, especially because most of my students and even dancers from different places, they start to ask me, hey, are you going to start teaching? Mm -hmm. so I was not sure if if that was, you know, possible. Yes. And I remember in one week, I set up everything. And then I start teaching right away because I was in it. I was receiving messages from there. I said, oh, no, I'm going to meet with you, you know, or oh, I don't know what I'm going to be doing here at my home without dancing. So mm -hmm. at the same time, I said, you know what, let's do this. Um, of course, it is not the same thing, mm -hmm. uh, especially with the income and you know that in New York City is uh you know it's very hard you need to keep working all the time and it is a very competitive city but at the same time you know it helps you to push yourself but then in this situation it was just like oh my god but then that's mean I'm not going to be even able to make the income that I was sure. doing so at least for now, um, so I'm still teaching online. So then I decide for a couple of reasons to then come back, you know, being in Puerto Rico temporarily. You know, I even remember when I took the decision uh, to just take one suitcase and come to Puerto Rico for two weeks mm -hmm. because of was the plan because I thought that everything will be normal very quickly. I never have been living in a pandemic. So, so yeah. okay, maybe everything will be, so it will be just two weeks and I don't even have costume. I remember I don't have costume and when we got the invitation, I was like, oh my God, you know, this is really happening. We are going to have an opportunity to perform. <laughs> yes. But all my stuff are in New York, but I'm here. So I was just like, okay, let's take the chance. And actually it gave, it gave me the opportunity to reconnect again um, with my mom. Mm -hmm. Because she was the one who was making my costumes when I started. And she made my costume like in three days. Like it was just like unbelievable. So, you know, like day and night, she was like sewing the costume. And we got, you know, we got the, the fabric and then she make a beautiful costume that still people are asking me about that costume. I remember it, I was starting, I started thinking about, oh my God, but how do you perform without the audience, you know? And how I perform in my living room, <laughs> how I do perform, you know, in, in, in this uh, normal space at home. So I just start thinking about you know at the end when you really enjoy when you start enjoying yourself mm -hmm. I think you can send that doesn't matter from where are you close far virtually yes. um, I was just thinking I just need to you know to try to focus mm -hmm. in this limitation of the computer and 
try to really push myself a little bit more with my energy mm -hmm. and, be, and trying to be very present. Well, definitely, I believe that art is, is what affects us. Um, as an artist, I always uh, feel affected for any, everything that surrounds me. Um, even in the country that I born, you know, the way, you know, our culture, uh, the problems that we have in our own country or the, or, or the good things too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so all of that always, I try to have that very present. Mm -hmm. Um, of course, we need to know exactly in what we, in what we want to focus, and we have a, we need to have a, a specific concept, sure. um, clear. And but but Raxel Sahra is definitely one of the things that I can relate with this mm -hmm. because, for example, I have been always trying to represent my art mm -hmm. and, and the experience that I have been having before with the with the company mm -hmm. um, for example in the beginning um, I start I started um, uh, focusing in you know in topics that are common about mm -hmm. love you know about grief about insecurities mm -hmm. or about joy mm -hmm. but then later on you know since uh, my career is already like getting more many years and more I try to now to see differently and then you know trying to be a voice also so mm -hmm. for example from the middle east um i have been trying to also travel there and see how things are going there so for example i was living there in Egypt for three months mm -hmm. and i remember everything that i was living there um, all the, uh, the the situations that the Egyptians were having, for mm -hmm. example, the revolution yeah. of 2011. I remember I, I went there a couple years after and people were very um, scared about that. My mom mm -hmm. always was saying, no, no, don't go. And then I was going by myself. And I remember I started like uh, researching about that. And when I went there, I started asking and and trying to understand uh, mm -hmm. what was happening there. So then the way that I start performing and especially uh, Mahraganat, which is one of the uh, a new uh, modern shabby style, yes. for those who know a little bit more about mm -hmm. Egyptian, Egyptian is like a ramification of different styles and shabby is mm -hmm. one of the most modern ones. So for example, Mahraganat, it really borns from the revolution in 2011. Mm -hmm. It started like a breaking and, yes. and strong protests with music, with movements. And then I say, oh my God, this is really interesting. And this is something that people also really need to understand. Mm -hmm. So I remember I started with that small things and then I create a choreography that involves that fact. Mm -hmm. from that uh, particular particular uh, situation in Egypt. Uh, you know, you will don't even believe, but I remember in the beginning when I moved to New York, my English was very low, very begin, a beginner uh, level, um, because here in Puerto Rico, I never felt this um, you know, like a uh, need to speak English because everyone speaks Spanish mm -hmm. maybe just a couple times, maybe, you know, very rarely. But then when I moved to New York, I said, oh my God, I can't believe it with my English. I was, it was very basic. So honestly, I was just focusing in trying to improve my English. And I, I'm, and I'm still now, I'm speaking English and like, wow, I cannot believe it, you know, that I can express better myself um but arabic i never thought about that never okay. <laughs> but what happened is that i remember when i went there for the first time to egypt 2015 in summer i was there by myself and and of course i, I couldn't talk with them there was something you know there was mm -hmm. 
it was something and then i wanted to kind of like connect even more so but that stayed in my mind for like, for a little bit and then since i wanted to continue dancing and and really specialize in in egyptian style mm -hmm. um every time that i was uh performing or, or selecting a song i read the translation mm -hmm. and then i start you know learning a couple a couple words and and then after a while i start feeling that that was not enough because i wanted to connect more because it's for example when i listen a spanish song oh my god feel it because mm -hmm. you understand every yeah. single word you know and and i wanted to really connect more with that and and then i said how about if i learn arabic <laughs> I started feeling the way that Egypt received me is was almost like 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 feeling home. Mm -hmm. And then I started going back again and again every year. And yeah, and then I said, okay, let's do this. <laughs> well, so in the beginning it was just to understanding the music. That's it. I do not want to, you know, to speak like normally with people so much. It was just to start understanding music. Mm -hmm. But then I said, actually, it really feels good talking with people mm -hmm. and reading and, and writing. It was very challenging. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I was feeling kind of like, wow, you know, I can, I really can connect even more. And then suddenly also, um, this was last year, um, there was an Egyptian production. Um, from a very famous show in Egypt, which is uh, Alba Abla Fajita. It's like a puppet. It's a puppet and, you know, they do a lot of like comedy and stuff like that. Um, and they are very famous in Egypt. And then they were going to do a tour in U.S. And then they were looking for a belly dancer, but they wanted this belly dancer who lives in the U.S. Yes speak Arabic and even better if she speak Egyptian Arabic because in, in the language in Arabic you have what is uh, the classic Arabic which is modern standard Arabic and then you have the colloquial mm -hmm. uh, from different countries and I started learning the Egyptian dialect so it was an Egyptian production and then uh, I, got, I got that recommendation and they did the interview and I, it was really nice. I mean, honestly, my Arabic is beginner, <laughs> but at least I can have a conversation. Yes. So they were looking for someone who can at least have that. And But then at the end, they gave me even lines to read that this is, oh my God. It was already my third year. Uh, but, you know, when you come back to US, you start speaking just uh, English mm -hmm. and and then it's not the same when you are in the country that you just go to the street and right. start talking Arabic. So that's why I was spending three months because I wanted to mm -hmm. at least something. Um, but yeah, I was having always, I actually always keep um, studying uh, by Skype. Mm -hmm. I have a teacher and then I always have like classes online. So at least I remember uh, during that month before the show, I started taking classes like twice or three times a week so I can, you know, speak better and have a better accent because Arabic is very difficult. Yes. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. It's really difficult, not just the language and pronunciation, but grammar, uh, the grammar is crazy too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, when I was there for even two weeks, I got the opportunity to cover uh, um, Luna of Cairo. So um, I remember she said, oh, I have uh, other gigs. I cannot do uh, my show. The the one that she used to, to perform in, it was a, in a boat by the Nile. I was almost going to die when she, 
asked me that, I was so, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God, yes. I never thought that I would have that opportunity. Like, and then performing with live music, with Egyptian people, you know, by the Nile River. Amazing. You know, that also was a really memorable one. And then the one with the uh, Egyptian production in US mm -hmm. that I was just performing for Arabs, you know, it's, it's very memorable for me because of course I know our audience always appreciate in New York. Sure. When you have people from there that they understand mm -hmm. every single detail about yeah. your performance, because remember I'm performing I'm dedicating, you know, my dance career to another different culture, mm -hmm. which is not mine, but I respect a lot, but I take it as it is mine. Mm -hmm. But I know they know every single detail, the gestures, the movements, um, the lyrics, the music, the costuming, you know, I know they know. So yeah so i really even that make me and appreciate more a lot uh, because it makes me very responsible to to uh, present you know present the best that i can uh a culture that is not mine but that i respect so that is a lot um you know as an artist we are open to you know to express and to create um what we want to share with mm -hmm. our audience with the world with our students um but there is something there are some some rules that we should have mm -hmm. first of all for me every time that i'm going to start for example a new style i need to understand first the roots you know what are their origins from there I can then start getting inspiration because I maybe will not be able to do it exactly like it is, but I'm going to get that inspiration. But I need to respect that roots. And of course, when I ha when I make a choreography, I try to keep that. Also, as an artist, I want to be able to create, but it needs to be something that it goes um, with that um with that roots you know um because yes i could the creativity can be open and you can do anything that you want but it needs to be something that is related with what you are doing and then at the end it is it is good also to see what is happening what is a fashion or what is uh, the trend or what is happening in in our um, in our generation right uh, of the dancers and then from there you know because maybe you want to be part of what is happening how I can explain this um, I Dios mio eh, it's a little bit hard because you know you need to keep the roots you need to keep, you know, you need to put also your creativity and then also you need to see what is happening around. I don't know if you get that, um, because of course the the dance is going to be like, a, it's going to have an evolution, you know, from their traditions. Um, and then uh, you want to have like a blend of all of that. Uh, and another thing that I also try to think when I'm performing something from from another country, and I actually realized this after many years, is that to be able to represent another country and another culture, you need to first start from your own country. And, and respect your own country and be involved in your own country. Because if you do not start, if, if you, oh yes, I respect another country. Oh yes, I do this for another country, but then you don't do it for your own. That's kind of like, do not make sense for me. So it was something that like, um, I started, I started to think about it. And then I said, wait a minute. 
I'm doing so much for Egypt and I love it so much, but then also I need to be active and I need to be connecting also with my country. You can choose as you want, you know, um, to share or to be involved. But this is something that, that for me, it makes sense at least. Well, like a uh, being you know like for example i i was living i was in new york well i'm still in new york it's so strange <laughs> so i was in the beginning i wanted just to go to egypt all the time oh my god thinking already when i want to go to egypt and then i said when i'm and then i realized that i was thinking reading so much about the history checking the news understanding like the language dancing performing their dance um of course I probably will don't have the time to do the same thing with my country, but then I say, no, no, no. I also need to contribute um, to my country. I need to know what is happening in my country, in my news, in the news. Um, for example, there was a big hurricane that happened here in Puerto Rico a couple of years ago. And then I want to be involved in that. And I remember I came here, I was doing volunteer work. I was trying to be involved. I was teaching some classes also free for people to just get like a release with all the, uh, the things that were happening. And then also I try to, when I teach or, or, or when I dance, I also try to, you know, keep that, that flavor, you know, from Puerto Rico, from the salsa and, and from the bomba y plena. It's something that I don't really show directly. It's something that I keep kind of like thinking about how we move, how we are as a has, has person, mm -hmm. our people how they are i want to keep that with me all the time to listening our music um, and coming here eating the food because honestly when i get focused with something i really get into that and i remember i was even cooking egyptian food at home <laughs> because i just wanted to be immersed completely and it's like wait 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 here also <laughs> my mom was telling me natalie you need to continue cooking arroz y habichuelas which means <laughs> rice and beans you yes. know <laughs> like please do not forget who you are i say oh my god yes that's true so you know that was something that actually i realized when i was in new york that i need to also always coming back to my country and and read books about my country and trying to, you know, to keep also a space for 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 my country because I'm from here and then I'm back here again. So yeah. Um, when I'm teaching, that's a particular energy connecting with my students and other dancers in the studio. It's like a very intimate, you know, like a connection that we are having during class and and this uh, joy of sharing also my knowledge with them and seeing how they grow and how they improve with their in their dance every time that they come to class that's a special you know joy that I have with that when I perform as a soloist, is is also something that that it makes me so full because i feel that i'm giving but then at the same time i'm receiving from the audience and 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 then that i can basically you know be be by myself be by myself and 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 share you know that uh through sentiment, you know, emotion uh, with the audience. Uh, and it makes me feel more powerful and strong in a different way that I could do all, I could have also in a group. Because also in a group, performing with them, I feel very powerful too. So it's, it's very, I don't know, but 
they are completely different because when we perform as a group with Raxel Sahra, which is my company that we have already, we are going to celebrate six years, inshallah, in November. Congratulations. Probably we'll have a show, <laughs> online show, so we are trying to see what happens first. Um, when I perform with them, it's something about community. We present that on stage, like understanding and caring about the other. And you see, it's completely different when you do solo or when you do a group performance. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, it makes me feel, and I cannot even say that I can choose. I do probably 60, wow, well, no, maybe 50 and 50% solo and choreography because chore performing with other people with so many that talented dancers um it really it it keep you also recharging but when you dance by yourself you need to recharge by your own so it's another different you know um journey also i did not even notice and then the other day actually uh, someone was, was telling me wow you all the dancers that are in your troupe they are completely different and some companies they like to have a specific height a specific measurements hair look you know and for me i said you need to first of course you need to have the talent the passion and discipline because for me you could even be the most talented dancer but if there is not commitment or you know like discipline because remember when we work in a group it's not just yourself you need to care about the other so these small things you know make what we are and and then at the end i don't even really look how they look i just uh, see how they make me feel mm -hmm. and how they express themselves how, how they move and and of course their personality of each of them is also very special because for me i always said that the way that you perform on stage is also the way that you are off stage basically when i'm in class with three four five ten or in workshops or performing or just talking like like we are talking right now and that's why you know i i really know that all my my favorite artists either they are dancers or singers or 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 you know different artists musicians i always realize that their personality their personality it really shows a lot and and this is something that that i also kind of like feel inspired and and that i also see that how true it is honestly because i have been seeing people in on stage and then when i talk with them and they say oh my god it's you know, she's even like better to talk in person. She's all, almost like performing, you know, and and that's really connects. That really connects uh, with 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 your art on stage too. Well, um, first of all, and a little bit discipline <laughs> with uh, during my classes, um, and that has been not changed even if we are doing online. Um, I like people to come on time. Um, why? Because this is something that is, uh, is, is you, it's a commitment with yourself. And, and another thing is to be open to, to learn and try to even is online to be very present because I know it could be distract taking class at home, but First, you need to commit with yourself, be ready for your class, mentally also, and then um, be open to learn and be present. 
with this, I will guide you. You just need to trust in the process. Um, I usually, you know, it depends class. Uh, it depends which class you are taking. Um, I like always to start with a warm up and uh, start connecting with the, the body. Then after that, I like to break down technique or posture, depend of the style, the feelings, the characteristic of, of, of the style. And then it depends of the class, but some classes will have combos or some classes will have drills. And, and it will depend, it will depend. Advanced classes, they are usually a little bit more challenged and I'm going to be kind of like exploring a lot with advanced classes. And for example, this Sunday, um, I'm going to start with the ethereal belt, uh, which is at advanced level. And as we were talking about what is, you know, how I get the inspiration and how I connect with what is happening in the world, um, on Sunday, I'm going to be dedicating and sending the energy to to this country that I don't know, probably you hear what happened recently on Tuesday in Lebanon, in Beirut. Um, this was a big explosion. And I was also there last year in January for a month, studying Arabic, walking in, uh, in those streets, talking with the people, uh, having new friends, making new friends there. So it was a lot of, you know, huh, emotion to see that news. So because that is affecting me right now and I'm thinking a lot about them, I'm going to dedicate that class. I will be, you know, using music from Lebanese singers. And then also the piece that we are going to be is from a, a very famous uh, sing, Lebanese singer, Feirouz. So I want to use this song that she dedicated to Beirut right now in my class. So it will be very special. I actually was a little bit late today because I was so inspired creating what we are going to be doing on Sunday. Uh, and I really completely lost the time. And then it was, oh my God, we have the interview. But it was because that song and that feeling of what is happening right now there, it took me. It took me even just in, in my personal practice. Yes, I try to, I think dance is, everyone can dance. I, I think actually we dance every day. When we wake up, we open our arms. When we hug, we also are like moving. Uh, when we laugh and, and share the energy, when we talk, we are moving. And I think dance is, is a great way for people to also release and share emotions. And, and I think I'm actually better expressing myself move, through movement than speaking. <laughs> So, you know, if I could really say all those things that, you know, we share with movement, oh my God, I don't know, I probably will be a, a, a writer or something. But yeah, I just like to express and have also the dancers who work with me to really release that emotions, you know, and dancing already, you see? <laughs>